we're going to start by talking about your somewhere in the non-metro area of Victoria. I'm regional. I think. Yeah, you're regional. In, I'm, I'm going back to your teen years. Yeah. Back then. Okay. Yeah. Where are you in your teen years? In Geelong. In Geelong. Yeah. We'll call that regional, even though I know there are people in Geelong who would take issues. Well, no, I, th I think <laughs> I think we are. Uh, I think no, I don't think they would. I think regional arts Victoria don't consider us to be regional. Yes, but creative Victoria do. Hmm. So <laughs> it <just laughs> depends what of who yeah. you want to who you want to. That's right. So there you are. We're in Geelong. In the what late early eighties, mid eighties, eighteen seventies, and you're driving a coal cart. That's no. right. Uh, <laughs> we were down the mine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, like what early early to mid eighties yeah. in your teen years, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, how do you go to the theatre, or does theatre come to you? How did you first intersect with it? Um, well, it's a good question. I think uh, I was involved with amateur theatre when I was a kid mm -hmm. and so... Play any big roles? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have cast me. <laughs> <coughs> but um, yeah, doing things like that, um, it was like a social you know, engagement. Yeah. But also I think at school we had a great, you know, it's the same story. We had a great music teacher mm. and he um, engaged with us. I'm not telling this story very well. But anyway, so we had a great music teacher and... <laughs> when you stop and talk about high school teachers and say he engaged with us and then no, you no. wander off into that a misty weird, thing and then it? say, I'm not telling the story well, mm. I start thinking about Cardinal Pell and getting frightened, Ross. But You're no. going to have to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, because I... Anyway, <laughs> so let me tell the story again. Yeah. So we had a great music teacher and he it was back in the day when there was much, I think, I think, hmm. much more freedom in curriculum. Yeah. And he wrote a couple of subjects that we did, which mm. were like um, introduction to, you know, popular music, or right. whatever. And so there was me and a couple of other people who, he was introducing us to the Beatles and Bob Dylan and, mm. and theatre and, you know, it was just one of those lucky happenstances. I mean, was, was so, many, so, many young, so many people, I think, have got those experiences where there's a special teacher that goes, yeah. you know, unlocks yeah. something that you never knew about. Yeah, no, it's a big theme, isn't mm. it? Mm. Is that kind of like using people like Dylan and the Beatles and stuff within theatre contexts, or was it more just studying it and talking about it? Yeah, or? and and like in class, playing albums, mm. looking at the lyrics. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like and poetry. Yeah, and yeah, and breaking it down and saying, well, what's what's happening here? And so yeah. from that, I think that really grew a really strong. Um, acceptance of drama and mm. theatre and music inside a, a pretty normal secondary school. Mm. You know, it wasn't a private school system where there was those kind of avenues existed. And from there, there's lots of bands that started and some really quite famous musicians now have come from those, that sort of enclave. Mm. And I got interested in music <coughs> and started playing in bands when I left high school and, and university and from there, I got interested in how songs were constructed and that led me to how theatre was constructed because mm. of, um, yeah, I saw this, this sim, uh, saw the connections between song structure and, and script mm. and I was interested in how that worked. Because I can remember very early, because um, you and I have known each other for a very long time yeah. now, yeah. Um, I can remember, I guess it would be the early 90s, where you were making shows with a lot of, there's a lot of big folk music influence, I, I yeah. seem to remember, a lot of guitar and a yep. bit of agitprop kind of text and song and yeah. mix, mixing all of that up together. That was a very, you might call that your first movement as a playwright, yeah. maybe? Yeah, it was, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. there were a few plays I remember in that kind of mould. Mm. And I was a huge fan of um, uh, Weddings, Parties, Anything yeah. in those days. And Mick Thomas, was the lead singer songwriter, mm. and his connection with Dave Steele, I think, um, I don't know, they were they were like modern Henry Lawson and mm. Banjo Patterson, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, that was really powerful to sort of 
tap into, well, you can be telling Australian stories yeah. without sounding like you're John Williamson, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that yeah. sort of urban folk experience was something that um, was influenced by Billy Brack mm. and, you know, The Clash and yeah. those kind of musical influences were pushing the direction that I wanted to explore as a, as a, a musician slash theatre maker. Yeah. And when you were in that period, mm. uh, early in your playwriting life, <coughs> um, can you think of, um, I guess I'm curious to wonder what maybe big sort of large theatrical experiences you might have encountered that pushed you along or opened you up or mm. um, made you sort of expand mm. as a writer? Like uh, I remember seeing Theatre de Complicity um, in Melbourne Festival, I think it was. Street of Crocodiles. No, it was, yeah. it was Three Lives of Lucy, oh, Lucy Cabral. Cabral. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was just amazing. Yeah. And it was one of those moments when, yeah, as a as somebody who was exploring, you know, theatre or script or thinking I could try something like that, mm. when you go, man, that's what theatre can do. Mm. It was so overwhelming. Yeah. You know, by the end of the play, the whole stage had been destroyed and transformed it was like a pink floyd concert you know it yeah, was yeah fantastic yeah yeah so yeah that was a really big moment for me mm. i'm going i was so close we had seats that were like three or four rows from the front for some reason and um yeah and was that storytelling was was right. the thing that really drew me into that production was going oh wow this is it takes you to another place yeah, yeah. And what about sort of writers, um, play, because you've mentioned obviously Dylan and um, Waiting's Parties, anything, so like, what you about mean? playwrights in that time? Yeah, yeah. In, uh, well, I think that came later and I got introduced to playwrights, I think, through Peter Matheson at mm. Melbourne Theatre Company. Mm. And what happened was uh, there was a show that we had, um, it was called Steel and Rough, this urban folk, mm. you know, thing and Siobhan Tuke saw it at uh, the Fitzroy Gallery and she said I want you to come in and meet this guy Peter Matheson at MTC and I went wow what am I doing there but Peter um, introduced me to you know really what playwriting is mm. and yeah without him there wouldn't be a direction in the journey that I've taken yeah. and, and he introduced me to people like David Hare yeah. and Martin Cribb and you know those gr that great crop of English playwrights, Carol Churchill, and yeah. you know, that was extraordinary. And a job that he did for very, very, very many young yeah. writers in that time, who was a really exceptional yeah. um, influence on all our generation and generation below us. Yeah. Incredible. Um, so, how did you. Um, my memory, I guess, is I remember a whole bunch of those kind of urban folk things, that of style, agitprop, very. Mm often very um, politically, usually very plain spoken, mm. um, very story based. That's, this is my recollection. Mm. Um, and then I know that you went to the Royal Court, which we'll talk about in detail in a minute. Mm. Um, and then it seemed to me from the outside that you came back with a, with a, with a style that had, was absolutely related because it's still you writing, but it had shifted quite Remarkably, is that a fair thing to say? Do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. And what was that? What What was that journey in you? Which bit? The, 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 when the ship? Well, I suppose what took you over there, like what <coughs> made you go? I'd like yeah. to go over there, and then what happened to? Yeah, sure. To, okay. To, to make that happen. Yeah. Well, Peter, I was at MTC, and the it's called an associate writer there. Mm. And basically that, what that meant was you could use the photocopier yeah. and hang out with Peter quite a lot. Yeah. And he... And tickets too, I think, wasn't it? I, re I seem to remember. Not so much. <laughs> uh, no, I think there were tickets. I can't remember. But, um, <laughs> but the access to, to him was the thing. Yeah. And so he, he said, um, all right, you're not going to write a play for us, but you're going to write a play. Mm. So... What's it going to be about, you know? And so I went away and I came back with this idea for a play and about, you know, architects and all this kind of stuff because I, I thought I'm going to write for MTC audience and 
And he read the first bit of it and goes, this, this is not you. You, know, <laughs> what, you really want to write about architects? And I said, I'm like, oh, I think, you know, yeah, they're kind of interesting. They build buildings. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he said, this isn't the play you should be writing. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, go away and write something else and come back. You know, and went back a couple of days later with um, a first draft of a different play, which was called Cold Light of Day. Mm. And he's like, yeah, this is a play you should write. And it was um, set in regional Australia and it was dealing with, um, you know, people that I was, I knew <laughs> closer. <laughs> I didn't know any architects. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I wrote one, the first play I wrote when I came back from the Royal Court was a play called Domestic Animals. Yes. And that was awesome. <laughs> and we did it for like, you know, 10 nights and above a, a cafe in, in the fringe and yeah, I'm, I was really proud of that work, yeah. and um, but yeah, the next the next one I think was construction. Yeah. And where did that? I mean, there's a there's an amazing uh, sort of formal experimentation and all those kinds of things in that which we can talk about. But I guess I'm interested in its central premise. Uh, well. <laughs> I was about to say, you, do you say that to a writer? Because <laughs> I guess it's central narrative premise, which mm. is a, a, a couple who are dealing with loss, loss and grief. Um, feels to me like something w that would be extremely uh, both difficult and um, wearing to spend time with as a writer. And um, uh, what was your experience of that? Was it was it something you found very easy or or did it did it, did it arrive in you or did you go hunting for it or just the, just the basic idea for it I guess yeah no I didn't go hunting for it it was definitely um, a period where that was you know my reality mm. but um, <coughs> the distillation was the that's the craft isn't it oh yeah so it's pretty easy to write you know thousands of words of despair yeah but um, yeah I was lucky that I was I was wanting to work with actors and I particularly wanted to work with Todd and Fiona McLeod mm. and because I'd seen them in other stuff together and I thought they're fantastic as a, their mm. chemistry was mm. really um, remarkable. And in the storeroom space where you're just so close and it's that intimacy, um, I was really drawn to working with them. So I wrote some stuff and um, took it to them and, and said, you know, can we use this? Do you want? Are you interested? Mm. And there was some, you know, toing and froing about about what we were going to do, but then um, we pursued it, and um, yeah, the editing, the distillation was the process, mm. and that's how we discovered um, the formal tricks. Yeah. You know that the play sort of became known for. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was through a dialogue with creatives rather than. You know, sitting at home and yeah. and moaning. So, <laughs> <laughs> not that you'd ever do that. Never. No. No. Not um, anymore. <laughs> so, with the with the development of that play, did did you go into it right from the beginning, going, "I want to be," you know, inverted commas, formally adventurous with this, or did you go, "I want to write about this material, and I'm not sure what form that's going to be," or how did that for you? Yeah. Right? No, I think it's probably safer to recollect that I wanted to work with those people yeah. rather than, and they, especially Todd in those yeah. days, were just, you know, he had no rule book. Yeah. You know? And um, so they were really interested in, in busting form. Yeah. And I was, you know, interested in what was making good theatre. Yeah. <coughs> and I remember going away and um, coming back to one rehearsal and, you know, they had, uh, still had the script in their hands and they were saying, you know, we've tried this, what do you think? And that kind of thing. And going, yeah, this is exciting me. Yeah. So that was definitely those formal adventurisms were a, a communal discussion. Yeah, it wasn't right. just me being, you know, Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. No, right. it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So can you articulate for anybody watching that hasn't yet read the play, in broad terms, what those formal um, 
I suppose, rule-breaking things are that yeah. you do in that text? Yeah, the idea of what's on script and what's off script, mm. the idea of what's real or what's um, immediate, what's happening now, um, as opposed to what's rehearsed. And so we, we played with the, the trope of a play reading. And I remember the first couple of nights, it was, it was amazing, you know, the first mm. couple of nights, especially the first night, um, people walked in expecting to see a play and they saw actors with scripts in their hands and the lights were still up. The <laughs> Did director. you hear groans? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 You, like because the way that, um, you know, the, the production worked, you know, the, the, the house lights stayed on and had this huge fade, so they faded like over 15 minutes. Mm. And so a lot of people didn't realise that the yeah. play was beginning. Yeah. And people were thinking, we paid 20 bucks to see a play reading. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and that was a real seduction into the piece, I think. Mm. There was great you know, thought behind that by the director and the designers. And um, yeah, to be able to, exp you know, because it, in, in that time, in that community, there's a lot of artists, you know, a lot of musicians, a lot of writers, a lot of actors who understood, you know, how hard it was to, yeah. to break into anything. Yeah. And I had a lot of musicians who went to see that show and, and come back and said, that's our story, you know, that's the story of the music industry or whatever. Yeah. So it, it, um, it sort of rang the bell at the right time. Yeah. yeah. And did you get any kickback, like, uh, <laughs> the, that marvellous joke about David, David, David Williamson. No, I want to be David Hare. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think I want to be David Williamson? Did you get into trouble for any of that kind of stuff? It's yeah, very, no. very naughty. It's yeah, well, there, was, there was a direct reference to Michael Cantor and yeah, Stephen, Stephen Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was, it was definitely in the first week. It could have been opening night. Mm. And they came. Yeah, right. And I remember sitting there in the foyer going, oh my God. <laughs> 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 because, you know, what are they doing here? That was the whole premise. You know. <laughs> but... Um, but, I, but they liked it. They, yeah. they got the joke. Yeah. And they produced it here. Yeah. You know, yeah. which was um, the you know, highest form of flattery. Indeed. Yeah. And it's, had, it's been done quite a lot. Yeah. Really around, around in, uh, in Sydney and around the country, hasn't it? In New York and yeah. Hobart. And Perth and <laughs> New York and Hobart in the <laughs> same sentence. Oh, no. <laughs> well, they're both artistically adventurous cities. <laughs> it's true. But um, yeah, it's this the it's one of those little plays that um, yeah punches above its weight. And where does it sit in your heart in the group of in in your your oeuvre? Yeah. Are you very fond, super fond of it, or not that you know? Like yeah, I think it's of course you know I mean. Yeah, I'm proud of it, mm. and um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I yeah. think it's it's one of those pieces when you when you watch it, you go, oh God, that's yeah. you know, it, I'm pleased I'm not there anymore. But um, yeah. but um, but there's plenty of truth in it, yeah. And I think that's why it exists. It does, yeah. I mean, it does have an astonishing, as you say, it's the it's the editing, it's the kind of dis distillation, yeah. But it does have incredible kind of like uh, shimmers of grief that run through it that are very, very frightening. Yeah. Even just to read on the page, let alone to see in the space. Beautiful um, kind of evocation of that, you know, mm. how, that liminal space, I guess, of grieving, mm. you know, that's really horrible to go through and, and, and very difficult, I think, very difficult to dramatise in an interesting way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, maybe I think that's true, and I think, you know, without having, you know, the the, the opportunity of being able to work with director and actors regularly mm. was the reason that that became a good script. Yeah, because you know the the problem that I face in the industry now is you are so removed from actors in yeah. a company structure. Yeah, that um, you know, you can go through a development of three drafts of a play that is going to be produced and not work with any actors until you get to rehearsal. And yeah. you look back at stuff like construction and you go, well, that was good because it was work you were working <coughs> with actors early. And you're you essentially know. making the work together. That's right. To say. <coughs> That's right. And you're, you're, you're writing the play with actors as part of the process, mm. you know. And, you know, I've had that. I went to school in 2015 to my master's at VCA yeah. and got 
excited about playwriting again because of that. The opportunity yeah. to be able to work with actors every day is makes you a better writer. Yeah. And <laughs>